Good evening. I would like to call to order the Washington County um, County Services Committee meeting. We are now called to order. Uh, before we get started with business this evening, I would like to take a moment to thank uh, former JP and chair of this committee, JP Harvey Bowman, for his service to Washington County and for his kind words of encouragement to me and his belief in my ability to be able to take over as chair of this committee. I appreciated very much learning from him as co-chair or as he called me, his co-pilot. And I plan to follow his lead in fairness. And just bear with me as I get used to the parliamentary procedure of this position. I'll try to say that three times. <laughs> With that being said, I would like to take this time for an election from the floor. Nominations are now in order for the Office of Vice Chair of the Washington County Services Committee. Nominations are open. Willie Lemming has been nominated. Let me find my pen. Any other nominations? Ms. J.P. Harbison? We close. That we close elections. All right, I make a motion that we uh, elect uh, Willie Leeming by acclamation. So, Second. So a motion to elect Willie Leeming by acclamation and the second has been heard. All, all, all vote now. <laughs> all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, say no. All right. Congratulations, Mr. J.P. Willie Lemming, as our new co-chair for committee services. No, no. Let's do this appropriately. So where's my purse? I trust her. You'd be fine. I can even have my short chair. So you're my new co-pilot. All right. I'm a crazy driver, so be careful. All right, here we go. Are there any changes to the agenda? this evening move we adopt the agenda uh, JP hires um, I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda to um, strike the phrase on items on the agenda uh, from public comment so that it just reads 12 minute comment period with a three minute limit for each individual to comment uh, 12 minute comment To clarify, I believe what you're saying is that you were wanting to strike from public comment section the wording um, items, the items on, on the, on the agenda. agenda. Yes. Second. Okay. So there's a motion to remove um, items on the agenda to strike the wording items on the agenda from public comment section of our agenda. And a second. All in favor? Say Ma aye. Aye. Opposed? Um, Madam Chair, in the city, I mean, in our county ordinances, it says relevant to the agenda. Relevant shows up three times in our, um, in the wording. And so I, I believe that it has to be relevant to the agenda and to the business. And the business is county services. That's why we're here. So to strike that would be illegal. Um, I'm looking at section two through 32 county code, uh, section G. There will be a 12 minute public comment period before a vote on any proposed resolution or ordinance during any regular or special meeting of the committee of quorum, quorum court. This shall follow the discussions by the committee members and quorum. Eleven, it says relevant to the business meeting. Um, Eva Madison. I know I'm not on the committee, so thank you for recognizing me, but um, it's actually subsection H. It says it's an independent section. It says there shall be also be a 12 minute public comment period at the end of each committee meeting. No individual may speak longer than three minutes. Mm -hmm. That's all it says. Um, 
that's a standalone section, not in reference to any other section. And that was the basis for our, my comment um, last night that we can't restrict the, the content of public comment. Um, but it has to be relevant. No. Respectfully, no. It's in there. Well, I think, I think the goal should be to allow the public to comment on whatever they have to talk to us about. They have limited abilities to come before us. So I don't think it's really in our interest to restrict what the public speaks about. So you're the chair, you get to decide. Motion stands. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed, say no. All right, moving on. The people do not speak. Motion fails. So moving on. Now I move that we adopt the agenda. Second. All right, we have a motion to adopt the agenda and a second by um, JP Lemming. <laughs> Sorry, see now I'm doing that. <laughs> second by JP Lemming. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, agenda is adopted. Is there any new business to discuss this evening? No. We have an ordinance on there. Well, that's the, okay. New business. Is the so ordinance. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all right, we do have an ordinance on number three on our agenda. Um, an, ordinance, an ordinance establishing minimum standards of habitability for residential rental property. Uh, J.P. Sue Madison and myself and Eva Madison are also signed on this. So. Would you like a moment to speak of this bill, of this um, ordinance? Thank you, Madam Chair. I might like a long moment. Okay, you got it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, members, last April is when I first brought this ordinance to this committee and um, had a good, healthy discussion about it. And tonight I wanna address some of the concerns that were raised and provide some additional information. But, um, the ordinance you have before you today is exactly the same as the one we considered last April, except that the emergency clause was omitted because it didn't make sense and we don't do that on this kind of thing. And um, two co-sponsors were added. It is not my intention to vote on this tonight. I just wanna have some more discussion and provide some more information, address some concerns. So we'll not be voting. Um, the handouts that were passed out were basically all I got done in time or with Miss Patty's help. They're editorials from the newspaper. I may supply some additional ones after tonight's meeting. Um, first off, this is only to address residential landlord tenant issues, not commercial. Commercial is covered elsewhere. Um, probably most of us have been a tenant at some time in our lives. And Certainly, some of our children have been tenants at some time in our lives. And some of us are landlords, and I am a landlord. Um, and let's be clear, a landlord's goal is to profit from providing housing to other people. That profit should also include some responsibility. In Arkansas, it doesn't. Um, Landlord-tenant laws are regulated generally by state laws. Federal law comes into play only in two instances. When we're talking about um, fair housing that was covered by the Civil Rights Act, and of course public housing in Section 8 is rec um, um, regulated by the federal government. Now there was a, a uniform residential landlord-tenant act that was proposed by one of those national organizations sometime years ago. And back in 2007, the Arkansas Speaker of the House, Robbie Wills, had a bill to enact portions of that Uniform Act. His bill only addressed the side that was beneficial to landlords. Didn't mention anything that would have been helpful to tenants. In fact, it went so far as to leave out any reference on how you would refund a deposit. So for a two-year gap there in Arkansas, landlords didn't have any obligation to refund a deposit. 
but that was later fixed. Um, Arkansas law is especially notable in that it completely lacks any warranty of uh, habitability for residential rental dwellings. In fact, we are the only state that does not require a minimum level of habitability. We're also the only state that criminalizes failure to pay rent. That means in Arkansas you could actually go to jail because you didn't pay your rent. Now, four, four counties have uh, had court cases on that issue, and um, those courts found it unconstitutional. So in four counties, Craighead, Poinsett, Pulaski, and Woodruff, you don't get put in jail for not paying your rent. I think our jail is plenty full enough in Washington County without adding people that didn't pay the rent. Um, I think almost every session of the Arkansas General Assembly has attempted to pass some kind of minimum standards for <laughs> habitability. I tried. Uh, Greg Letting has tried. The Arkansas Realtors Association always strongly opposes any attempt at minimum habitability standards. And um, I talked to their lobbyists today. I've known the lobbyists for the Realtors Association for a long, long time and had a good discussion. Um, it appears that the landlords do absolutely support good residential housing. That goes without question. And uh, their lobbyist thinks they are pretty ready to support a minimum habitability standard if it is truly minimal and doesn't include a lot of peripheral things. Um, so this ordinance that I've drafted that I presented in April and is presented again tonight, these minimal standards are a functioning smoke alarm, an operable unobstructed door to get in and out of your residence, an operable door or window from every sleeping room. And to me, that is the most important part a source of electricity, a source of potable drinking water, a source of wastewater connected to an approved disposal system, a source of hot and cold water, glass or true translucent plexiglass covering all windows, and a source of heating, and that's it. And that doesn't mean that if they provide a source of heating and the tenant doesn't pay the gas bill that the landlord has to pay the gas bill. No, it just, you have to provide some way for the house to be heated. And part of what prompted me to look at this back when I tried it was um, a very tragic fire that occurred in J.P. Harbison's district, I believe. The fire chief down there called me about it. Um, There was a fire out in the county, I believe it may have been a duplex, and the front door was obstructed. There were children in the house, and the firefighters could not get to the children because there was no window or door in, the, in their bedroom. We have some very, very dedicated emergency responders in Washington County. Willie Lemming is a testament in this court, on this court to that dedication that they have. And we have invested training. We provide equipment. Um, can you imagine the toll it takes on our responders when there's a tragedy like that that we could have prevented? Now, one of the editorials that was passed out references a fire since last April in Northwest Arkansas where two children and their mother died from a fire when a furnace malfunctioned and the house caught on fire in the middle of the night. These are preventable deaths. An operable entry door, a smoke alarm. I solicited the extra comments after last April's meeting and, and didn't receive any. I don't think I've 
commented on past meetings myself, but I would like to address some of the comments that were made that night and then maybe answer additional questions. Um, J.P. Harbison was distressed that there was no lack of enforcement in the bill or in the proposal. And we actually have a lot of ordinances on the books probably that don't have any enforcement to them. Um, but as I think it was J.P. Eva Madison pointed out that night, that a tenant where there was no heat as uh, J.P. Hires mentioned with her son last April, could take this ordinance to the landlord and say, did you know you're violating a county law? I'm supposed to have a, a, a heat, available heat. Now, J.P. Bowman, our chairman, said all this was was red tape if it didn't have any teeth. But a tenant could also take this ordinance to an attorney and say, you know, I'm supposed to have been provided a smoke detector or I'm supposed to have an operable door to get in and out and my landlord's not providing that. J.P. Eggie's comment was, that we can't legislate morality, that bad people will do bad things. And we have jail proof of that. But in fact, we do legislate morality all the time. And we put them in jail. If you steal from people, there's a consequence for that. So we do legislate morality. But this is, this is more the, of the do right principle, I think. Um, and J.P. Johnson pointed out that Arkansas law is caveat lessee, which I think he explained means let the tenant beware. And that does describe current law, and I believe that you are, you've got this for us? I got it. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, this is a publication that describes what current law is, so it doesn't speak to what could be law. And I've used this booklet myself as a landlord. Um, J.P. Pond was concerned about what about providing free housing to folks that were out living in the cold. And I talked to my attorney about this, and the bill is the draft is very clear that it's premises that are leased or rented. So if if you're not charging anybody any rent. If you let them sleep in your barn on a cold night or a warm night maybe, then you have no obligation under this proposal. Um, J.P. Lemming said, um, we can't change the way people live. And um, that's true. <laughs> and I've been in quite a number of dwellings that it was hard to get past the front door for all of their treasures that they'd collected over the years. But this applies only to rental living conditions that the landlord has quite a lot to say about. If I went to one of my rent houses and found a couch pushed up against the front door, I'd be down there in a heartbeat and that couch would be moved. But when people own their own homes, then they pretty much get to do with them what they want. But a landlord has some obligations, I think, when we're making money off of the houses that people live in. Um, and J.P. Lemming pointed out that people don't have to live there. Right now, the newspapers tell us that we have 28 people a day moving to Northwest Arkansas, which I find kind of staggering. And the rental market, especially at lower income level, lower, lower levels of rent, is really tight. And you don't always get to choose where you're going to live. You might choose based on what you can afford or what's available. 
But the most important thing I want you to remember about that is because of these two tragedies, children don't get to choose. Mom and dad choose. But children are often the ones that suffer when there's a problem. Um, the legislature has worked on this and failed us all to come up with a solution to this problem. And I think it is a black eye for the state of Arkansas that we're the only state that doesn't care enough about our children to pro provide them with safe housing when their parents are paying for that housing. So I'll be happy to answer any questions and um, I'll have some more information that I can supply between now and when we do eventually vote <coughs> perhaps on this. Good job, Miss J.P. Madison. You had one minute left. <laughs> yes. Um, J.P. Um, Lemming. There's there's a million questions to answer. Uh, ask. You know, you talk about not having smoke detectors. The fire department in Lincoln, Cincinnati, Summers. We've gotten grants before. We've put far. We've put I don't know how many and just give them away. You go back out there a month later. They're open. The kids got the batteries in their remotes. They're not, I mean, you, how in the world are you going to enforce all this? How, how, if you pass the law, ordinance, are we going to hire more police officers or building code inspectors? And, and the way I see it, the city of Fevel's got their own building people, coordinators, and they've got rules. And you're, you landlords, you have to pay, play by their rules, don't you? Do you want me to answer each yes. one? Is, okay, yeah. thank you. I mean. Um, Fayetteville has no standards either for residential landlords. I think if you have a home and you're renting it out, it ought to be turned into a commercial business, and it ought to have a whole lot different rules and regulations. I mean, I mean you're actually having a commercial business by having rentals. Are you not, or is that just, what you just call that residential rentals? What would you call it? The city of Fayetteville does require you to buy a business license, and I have a business license. For to it. have your rentals? Mm -hmm. Okay. But all you have to do is pay $15, I think. They don't do any inspections. <coughs> they don't require anything. And they have a building code And I know out in rural Washington County, we don't have building codes on that kind of stuff, but I have people living in the end of old chicken houses. I have people living in dairy barns I have them living in semi trailers I have them living in campers and they're happy being there and they don't want us making more laws and rules and telling them what to do they want to live there and they want us to leave them alone and I, I don't know how else to say that any different are you charging them rent no I don't have nothing to do with it it ain't me I don't have no rentals I wouldn't own a rental <laughs> <laughs> I can just go drive you around and show you things like that and I know these people are poor. We talk about they can't make bail at jail. A lot of them can't make bail, plus they can't make food for their kids or families. We can't, I don't know how we could feed everybody in the country. I, I'm sorry, but I mean, I hate it, but I don't, I don't know how to change it either, but. This proposal would only address where somebody is profiting from renting a dwelling that doesn't meet some minimal standards and I know exactly what you're talking about is about smoke detectors because every time I check a rent house either I sometimes get around to doing some inspections while they're living there not always when when somebody moves out one of the first things I often check is you're right the smoke detector and they've taken the battery out I'm not proposing that we babysit or or go in and find them because their teenager took the battery out I'm just saying that when they first occupy, when you sign a lease, you should have provided a working smoke detector, just like you should provide a source of water. That doesn't mean you have to pay the water bill. There are, these are minimal standards, J.P. Lemming. They are by no means what you would expect at Pinnacle. Well, I know what you're saying because I just tore an apartment building down in Lincoln that was, there was about 34 <laughs> units there. 
And when we walk in to go to, to get ready to tear them down, the cockroaches were so bad that you'd carry you off. And kids was living in them the day before. And the windows was all boarded up. And the city of Lincoln took the initiative to force these people to get rid of it. And, and if all of your cities and everybody would do that, you Prairie Grove, Lincoln, Farmington, everybody in Elkins and all of us, I know they're doing that and they're watching that. So I don't know how, I just don't know how Washington County can do much more than what's being done. I know, I understand what you're trying to say, but I just don't, I just don't see where, we're, how we're going to get there. JB, let me, right now Washington County is doing nothing. I'm glad to know that Lincoln is. But at least we could say this is what this county expects. And here's an ordinance that this county has passed. We can't put them in jail. We can't send somebody around every couple hours to make sure the teenager hasn't taken the battery out of the smoke detector. But, why got, but when they move in, when you turn the property over to them, there's a functioning smoke detector. Well, most people, when they go look at a house to rent, it'd be like buying a car. When I buy a car, I make sure there's a windshield in it. So the people that rent an apartment are to look, walk through it at least and make sure all that stuff's there before I would if it was me and anybody else should to just see if, you know, take a walk around and make sure it's livable. I don't know. I just don't know. Thank you. Children. Uh, they're, they're the ones that. Okay, J.P. Hires, then J.P. Eva Madison. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just wanted to make a point. Um, we're talking about cities need to do this, um, but with the rise in rents that we have seen in our urban areas, we're seeing more and more people of limited means being pushed out into the county. Um, and so I, I guess I just don't understand why this is such an issue. Um, so thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. It seems to me that if 49 states can do this, why do we want to work so hard to retain our status as number 50? I'm just really puzzled by that. Um, are, are we really of the mindset that we want to say, well, we're so sad those, those kids died in that fire without a smoke detector. That's not our problem. They should have checked to make sure the smoke detector was working when they went to rent the house. I, I, why, do, why are we fighting to stay at the bottom? It's embarrassing, really. Um, is it hard to, to say that families and kids deserve water and heat? and electricity? Or do we want to continue to be the reputation that Arkansas has nationally? Or does Washington County want to be the leader for the state of Arkansas and try to say we should do better and the legislature should follow our example? I, I don't understand this mentality of this fight to stay at the bottom. But, I mean, if, if we could save one child's life in a fire by passing this ordinance, why are we fighting against it? Apparently, we like our number 50 status, so it's very disappointing. Thank you. J.P. Pond. We're, uh, uh, maybe, all, maybe all of us have a, a different set of standards in mind that we think is acceptable. Um, I want to say that most of the time, people living in the kind of the conditions you describe would like to do better, would like to afford better, uh, and possibly some of the time it's a, it's a drug-induced issue. That, that might not be hard to guess when you determine what percentage of people in our overcrowded jail are in there for some reason or other. It's drug induced. Uh, one of the one of the things that bothers me is that we pass this set of standards, and some of these people were living someplace 
but when you force them out because that's all they could afford then where where do they go do we have uh, government projects that that need more tenants that need to be filled uh, uh, what is the issue here uh, you're possibly you have some uh, uh, adults living there that uh, they're going to wind up being homeless if they do have children um, they're going to be in a, some kind of a group home for orphan children or a foster home um, that sort of thing i i think sometimes we can just help people to death and and i i don't to, I'm trying to be as polite about this as I can, but you know, I, probably we'd have to do some work on my house before we could rent it out to somebody else. Now, come and see if you think that's a outrageous statement. But uh, I just uh, think that we have been <laughs> intruding in other people's lives way too far already I, I don't i don't need the intrusion i i if i if i need your help i'll come and ask you thank you may i respond madam chair uh, yes since we started out with jb lemming um i'll take you up on your offer if you clear it with your wife first <laughs> thank you <laughs> jp johnson yep i I've been providing housing in Washington and Benton counties for 30 years, and I want everybody to understand profit is not a dirty word because I would not have built the first house if some banker hadn't lent me the money to do it. And if I'm not making a profit, they don't even want to talk to me. So profit is not a dirty word. J.P. Washington. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, as I'm listening to the discussion, it seems that we're really losing focus on what this ordinance is about. It is not about decreasing profits for landlords because Justice Madison is a landlord, so she's definitely not going to do something that's going against her interest. This is not about uh, helping people to death. It's not about uh, intruding. What I hear being said is that this is about setting a minimum standard uh, for habitability and I think it's quite sad that we live in a developed country and we're actually here having a debate on whether or not a landlord should provide access to running water to um, bedrooms that have windows that have a way to to exit them um, on I mean I don't know I don't know what I'm missing but I don't want us to get lost in all of these other things that may affect us personally that we lose focus on the intent behind this is to hold people who are renting spaces accountable for those spaces. And I think that any responsible landlord would want to have running water. Any responsible landlord would want to have smoke detectors. Now, once those things are provided, you have absolutely no control over what anybody does with that. And I know that if I was a landlord and there was some type of accident or something, I'm gonna sleep well knowing that I did what I was supposed to do. If a kid chose to take batteries out of a smoke detector, there's nothing I can do about that. I provided the smoke detector and I did the minimum of what I needed to do. So I just want us not to lose focus that this is simply about establishing a minimum standard and I mean how much more basic can you be with a minimum standard thank you for allowing me to speak JP Ecke I'm not on the committee so it's that's at the pleasure of the chair if I can speak or if there's other committee members that want to speak before me are there That's any fine. other committee members who would like to speak? But, Pond. Forgive me. I, I, I did. I did want. 
one I did have one other thing to say about this. Uh, there's nobody on this horseshoe, I'm sure, that uh, is opposed to any individual, adult or child, having these minimum standards. But when we impose this on people, it's the unintended consequences. The unintended consequences, uh, and, and you yourself, Ms. Washington, put yourself in the place of the landlord, and all of a sudden you were on the defensive. You made sure that those, these items were in the, in the home when the people moved in, but you can't help it what they do with them, what happens after, after they move in. And what this does, it puts well-meaning owners of properties on the defensive as soon as we pass this, and it's not going to be the responsible tenant that causes this landlord to be on the defensive, it is the irresponsible tenant that that he's unintentionally wound up with that did, was, did not know these tenants might be this sort of bad actor. Most of the people, that, the landlords that are going to you know, be opposed to just another regulation are responsible landlords that uh, they, wound, they provided all this stuff and then they wound up because of uh, bad acting tenants. All of a sudden, they're on a defense because of some other regulation that we passed. Thank you. J.P. Ecke. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think y'all proved my point that you can't legislate morality when kids are taking batteries out of the smoke detectors and doing moral things that they shouldn't be doing and tampering with things. So, but my point is, number one, state law trumps anything that we do. And an ordinance establishing minimum standards. So this is a law that we want to pass for here in Washington County, establishing minimum standards of habit habitability for residents, um, Arkansas state law already has that, and it says these are the landlord tenant rights, repair and maintenance. The tenant has the right, or the, the, the landlord says, this is my property as is. The tenant has the right to lease it or not to lease it, to rent it, or not to rent it. But that's a requirement. It's as is, according to the landlord. They are not required to provide additional maintenance or uh, repairs unless it is in writing by the renter. If the renter says, I want this in writing that you will come check my smoke detectors, I want this in writing that my front door works, in the clause, then the landlord doesn't have to do that. State law does not require them to do that. As far as um, their city building codes, each city has their codes, and each building has to be up to code. As far as the county is concerned, we have the health department. If the, um, should you feel that your living conditions are an immediate health risk, you contact the health inspector in your locality, in your, and that's what we do here in Washington County. So that they are the enforcement agents right now, according to state law. Um, so as to the purpose minimum standards, there are those standards. And the renter can say, I'm sorry, my kids are getting sick or it's roach infested. They can go to the health department and they can also file um, a suit against the landlord in small claims court. Now, the renter cannot withhold rent. That's against the law. So with all due respect to Justice Madison and 
I, I said this last time, and I wish you would have said this this time. I believe you've got the biggest heart in Washington County. You care about people. And I said that last time, and I said it this time. And that's true. And no one can take that away from you or diminish that from you. It's something that we all admire. But this is government overreach or duplication because we already have state regulations that enforce this. The emotional argument saying that um, our standards are so low, that's, that's an argument that our state legislators are going to have to make and decide because we are governed by state law. Um, embarrassing? I'm not embarrassed because people have a right. I mean, there's some people that I knew that lived with dirt floors, but let me tell you what, those dirt floors were clean. They were clean. And I grew up in South Texas where they had their house was made out of roofing material. That's just, that was their siding, but the house is clean. Um, to do this and to move forward with this, we would be spending money unnecessarily and duplicating government enforcement on people's and private citizens' lives. So thank you for allowing me time, Madam Chair. J.P. Lemming. I just, I just want to say one more thing. The uh, 18 volunteer fire departments in Washington County, their chief can make one phone call to the health department, and if you find an elderly person or if you find a child that's in trouble, I've, I've done it in the 40 years that I've been on our fire department. Chief is 16 years. In the last 16 years, I've called that health department about four times on elderly citizens that was not being took care of. And, and I promise you within an hour, they was there, they picked that person up and they took care of them from then on. So the health department with the volunteer fire departments as the chief, we've got a lot of power and we can get stuff done if we have a problem and we see a problem out there. So the health department works good for us volunteer fire departments. Thank you. JP Bond. Uh, thank you for allowing me to speak another time. I, I know I've taken two turns. Uh, I did want to add one thing that was mentioned, the fire alarms and the volunteer fire departments. I, I have my doubts that there is a volunteer fire department in Washington County that you could not go to and tell them, I don't have a fire alarm. A smoke detector. I mean, you get one at everybody's. You can get a smoke detector from any volunteer fire department in this county, as far as I know. Um, this it's it's what they do with them after they come and pick them up. It's anybody's guess. Thank you. <clears throat> Just touch on that a little bit more. John Luther is real good about getting grants for us and. And the last time they got us a grant, each department got probably between 40 and 50 that we passed out. You take 50, 40 to 50 out of 18 fire departments across Washington County, that's a lot of smoke detectors. Thank you. Any further discussion? Sue um, JP Sue Madison. Thank you, Madam Chair. I kind of got behind on replying to the comments and I may have forgotten some of them and not made the right notes, but. I want to assure J.P. Johnson that I also am in this for the profit. It's not a hobby. <laughs> I can think of more fun, funner, whatever, hobbies I would pursue rather than being a landlord. It is definitely for profit. Some houses make a little more than others. but um, And as far as I know, to J.P. Eckes' comments, there is nothing prohibiting Washington County from enacting standards different from what the minimal standards are may, may be that the state requires. Now, there are instances in the law where the legislature has said, you know, nobody else can mess with this level of ordinance, and I'm not saying that right, but 
Washington County can most certainly adopt some minimal standards of habitability. And I think it's time for Washington County to address this issue. I mean, minimal standards. I doubt that any one of us would live in a dwelling with such minimal standards. But if our children were living in one with those minimal standards, well, we'd probably give them some money, but um, precluding that, we'd probably expect somebody to address it. I mean, if my, if my son were living in an apartment and there was no heat during the winter and he had paid the bill, I can promise you I would be calling the health department or DHS, but I'd certainly take a copy of the ordinance to the landlord. Maybe the landlord is one of those good old guys that tries to fix everything himself and he's just gotten a little behind and can't get around to my furnace. And there are landlords like that. Then by golly, here's the ordinance it says, fix it. <coughs> and I apologize if I've forgotten some of the other comments, but I'll watch the tape and I'll try to address them. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Chairman. I, I'm I, sorry, I should have been more time. regulated. It's, it's okay, it's Making hard. sure that you got to answer those questions. Uh, J.P. Thomas? Oh, I was just curious. So. <clears throat> If these are implemented, I mean, what's the what's the implications? I mean, what's the what's the penalty for not meeting the minimum standards? I mean, there is no penalty in here. The the question, that, and I'm just thinking of this from a business standpoint, myself being a small business operator and everything. But if you shift the liability, somebody's then responsible. So if you're shifting some of this liability back to the renters somebody's got to be responsible or held accountable for not meeting minimum standards. You think this is shifting responsibility to the tenant? No, no. Okay, I'm, I'm not following you. Uh, no, no, I think this is shifting responsibility to the landlord. And, and I think that they would be held liable for certain instances, whether it be their fault or the tenant's fault. Because somebody's going to have to, if you put minimum standards in, there has to be consequences. There has to be a cause and effect. So if there's consequences, somebody has to be liable for not meeting the standards. That was the only question I was okay, asking. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and I do understand now. If we were to have minimal standards in place and somebody's rent house that they'd been renting for four or five months, um, failed to have heat that was working. And they called the landlord and said, there's something wrong with the furnace. Could you please get it fixed? And three months later, the furnace still isn't working. And there have been numerous phone calls. Then, then that tenant probably would take this ordinance to an attorney and say, can you help me? Or maybe go to legal aid and say, can you help me? I'm not sure that they couldn't do that right now. But this would give more leverage to the tenant. And you know, if these tenants have no money, fixing a furnace, replacing a furnace, whatever might be necessary, can be a big expense. And it's an, and it's it would be a, an upgrade for the rental unit to have a new furnace or a fixed furnace. And Probably J.P. Johnson knows, like I do, that the most valuable contacts you have are a really good plumber and a really good HVAC person and a good electrician. Let me see if I'm missing any of my key people here. Because I couldn't be a landlord without them. So um, I, I have one other comment that I want to make because this discussion has sort of focused on the lower income level perhaps of tenants and I want to remind you all as I did at, at the first meeting about this issue is that we have a large and perhaps growing number of short-term rentals in this area. Fayetteville is currently looking at that situation and estimates perhaps more than 500 in the city of Fayetteville. 
Short-term rentals are also known as Airbnbs. And people are renting out parts of their homes that may not may not be adequate for sleeping rooms. I've spent some time looking at what's available in Airbnb, and sometimes it looks like they're showing a bed down in a basement with only stairs to get up and down out of that basement room. And a tragedy like that in this area would be very, very, very bad publicity for our town. In our our county madam chair that's all I have um, thank you JP Lemming he's talking about Fevel building all these houses and all this stuff as a firefighter I think Fevel's messing up because you look at the way they're building these and they have got truckloads and truckloads of lumber built building them out all out of lumber and they've got the uh, open span trusses and them things, when they burn, they'll burn fast and hard. And people better be ready to get out of them because they're going to hurt some people, I think. That's just my opinion. I just wanted to see if I'm, if I could clarify what you're saying. You're not meaning the, the new build. You're talking about people who have homes already and that are using spaces in their homes for these Airbnbs. Is that correct? Madam Chairman, yes. Okay. I mean, Fayetteville does have codes for new housing maybe we need to get jp lemming to talk to them about it but new construction new construction has to have wired in smoke detectors in every bedroom plus a battery operated one somewhere in case the electricity is off but that's new construction and there's no checking ever on other things after you've got your initial certificate of occupancy i believe Okay, um, I think we'll end this discussion here and public comment. We have 15 minutes, guys. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Second. Motion to adjourn.